Well, again, let me say good morning to you. I hope that you did enjoy that edition of Johnny's Bite. You can go to the studios of 3FM 92.7 or also go onto the streaming platforms and uh, 3FM 92.7 across social media to get the latest. Let me say good morning to a couple of you who have already joined us. It's always a delight to have you. Uh, let me say good morning to Guy G, who's a regular watcher of us. My uncle is celebrating 70 years. And so let me say good morning to Samuel Mensanoi. It's coming from myself, um, Alvin as well, Alvin Noy, Pamela. And then also um, your wife, who is my auntie as well, and wish you all the best uh, for the day. Samuel Mensanoi of Accra, 70 years is no mean feat. Money, knee, money. All of you have joined us across the stream. Please, we want to have some great conversation. We encourage you as many times as possible. Make sure you cash out. Goes with the short code star 439 hash. We'll put it on the screen for you. I particularly love the mega jackpot. I'm looking for, forward to it on Friday. We chose option eight that day, but today you're choosing option two. On Friday, it was mega uh, 30,000 given out to six winners, 5,000 Ghana cities each. So same as we do. Consequently, if you want to become great winners this morning, you have to increase the number of chances you have by increasing the stake. Choose option two, TV three, and then also increase the number of tickets. Very important. And um, when you do that, you have some great time. Eric Opare, your boy. Aiden, uh, you're in Cape Coast. Good morning to you, a great friend of mine. Uh, Mama Wo, who is with the Asokli State. Good morning to you. I wish you all the best for the day. And then also uh, Chairman Prosper. And then um, Chairman Godwin Tamaklo, who is a group chief executive for the Raid Group. Ten years, haven't been in existence, making sure they have the right things to do. Well, let me just uh, tell you what we're about to discuss. The situation in Boko has now prompted the Oversight Ministry to put in place a curfew. And Boko is always a concern. I have my great friend there. And so um, I'm always, always making sure that I also become part of the stakeholders who want uh, peace. Dr. Salifu Kombat is a great friend of mine um, with the Boko Presbyterian Hospital, and sometimes the narrations are just not too good uh, when he tells me about the concerns. Um, Big Joe, good morning to you as well, Big Joe. Uh, all the great friends I have in Boko, please know that we're with you. We're here to talk about how we need to make sure we bring all the things to bear and then also uh, bring some peace. Uh, Mago, Margaret Anse, uh, good morning to you, uh, says uh, watching us. But let me just introduce um, a security analyst with uh, Security Warehouse Limited. Uh, he's a CEO, Dr. Adam Boda, good morning to you. How are you? Well, thank you. Okay, great. In the studio here, we have Alfred Thompson, DM It Is Possible 2024 campaign team. Good morning. How are you? Great. It is possible. I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm it's well, sir. Sometime. Yes, yes, I'm well. And then also, uh, Umar Adele is here. Sheikh, how are you? <laughs> I've given you the name Sheikh. Umar, Umar Sheikh. <laughs> I know, I know. Thank you. Uh, Mashallah. Mashallah. Salam. 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 Okay. Well, Alhamdulillah. But um, please, for all the things we have to do, we have to take you through. So we will also speak to a resident of Boku just to g give us an insight as to what the situation is. I've got some videos I don't want to play on air where um, I, I hear sounds of multiple gun rifles. Uh, in the air in Boko and sometimes surprises me. I can't put that on air but just for security reasons. And sometimes we also don't have to adapt to the tensions in Boko and get everybody alarmed. But it is an alarming situation. So we'll get uh, a resident on board, certainly. But um, let's make sure uh, that we get the conversation right. And um, Adam Bonam, why are we having this round of tension or conflict based on your own observations and analysis well good morning roland and good morning to your in-studio panelists and your viewers well i believe that this uh, round of violence was always waiting to happen it was always waiting to happen i believe we are aware that uh, you know an enskinment took place of another chief for Bapu, even though we already have one who has been there and has been gazetted. And the leadership of this country keep reiterating the fact that they are, you know, there is already 
a gazetted chief in Boko. And therefore, you know that once uh, another chief or another person is uh, escaped, then there is bound to be violence in, in that community, which is unfortunate. And so, uh, in short, I would say, uh, and you, you know, that there has always been violence, even though before, uh, you know, this, uh, the, the rival chief was installed or was enskinked. Uh, there's always been violence. Proud to that, a lot of people had died. Proud to that, myself, I joined, uh, you know, the leadership of uh, our security architecture to visit Boko. Mm. And uh, that was when uh, there wasn't, uh, you know, any rival chief who had been enskinked. And before then, tensions were high. So you can imagine when, uh, you know, a rival chief has been escaped. Obviously, uh, the situation will get worse than, than it used to be, Alfred, uh, Roland. Okay, and we know that uh, a curfew has been, uh, has been put in place. I mean, does it help in any way? In what form does it? Well, curfews are just a temporary measure in security to ensure that the security deployed there will take control of the situation. Once they arrest you, it means that you would have, first of all, broken the laws <laughs> implicit at once. I mean, that is the essence of curfew. And so that everybody is kept indoors while they try to clear the streets and try to, you know, sweep, you know, swoop in on those who misprints who have firearms and all that and arrest them with the evidence. But apart from that, <coughs> Uh, curfews are just a temporary measure. It really won't do much. There's always been curfew in Boko. They either would push it to maybe uh, 6 to 4 a.m. or maybe 10 to 6 a.m. It keeps changing. And so depending on the exigencies or uh, depending on how bad the situation is, they would usually impose curfew from a certain time to a certain time. But that, that, that has not really... Uh, call it uh, made the situation any better it's temporary and how long are you going to impose curfew uh, in Boko? curfew wouldn't solve the problem it's just a temporary measure and as far as i'm concerned reading the ministry of interior or i'm told the president chaired uh, the national security meeting that issued the the empty letter that was issued the letter or oh, sorry the press the press are very empty if you ask me because then people are dying uh, in this round of violence in Boko, and all the leadership we have elected to do, uh, all, all they have done is literally laments. We didn't elect, uh, you know, uh, the president and for him to appoint his uh, team, for them to al al lament when we find ourselves in situations like this. They are there to solve problems. And so if there is a problem and all you do is to recount the problem, without pointing to how to deal with the problem. Mm. And you issue a whole state organization, like the Ministry of the Interior. And I'm told the president chaired the, you know, the national security meeting that culminated into the, the, you know, the imposition of curfew. And all we saw, if you mm. ask me, everything in that uh, presser, it's about the curfew. Because recounting that uh, an illegal uh, chief has been installed, blah, 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 blah. That is not what Ghanaians elected the leadership to do. Tell us what you are going to do to ensure that peace returns to Boko, uh. that if there is a situation that uh, we are worried about, you are but telling us you, are, you have imposed curfew. It's not the solution. No. All right. Uh, Mr. Thompson, at the end of the day, uh, good initiative taken by the government, but um, could we have done better? Or what is the line of communication or concern in terms of opinion on the corridors of government when it comes to this conflict? Good morning to you. Good morning, And uh, it's rather unfortunate this is happening again. Mm. I would, uh, um, before I start, I would say good morning to Dr. Alaji Mahmoud Baumia, who will be on the tour some uh, market areas today in Accra. Uh, he's going to... Dr. Baumia is on? On, on the tour, yeah. Okay. He's still working hard. He's, he's not relenting his efforts to make sure that on the 7th of December, as he said, on the 8th of December, they'll declare him 
the president in waiting. And we believe that the hard work he's put in, the effort he's put in, is nothing that uh, he's just going to sit at home and say that, oh, um, this is an automatic win, so he's not going to work hard for it. He's working hard for his own um, victory. And we are all supporting him with our hard work and make sure that on the 8th of December, declaration will definitely be made for him. And so I would say that um, we'll do that, inshallah, with God being on our side. It's unfortunate that we come here every election year to sit down and talk. Getting to the elections, we come back to this Boko issue every now and then. It tells me straight away that there are some um, political influences or political connotations attached to it. It's unfortunate. Um, I know that uh, our good friend who just spoke is a security expert, and he doesn't expect that once the president has sat in such a security meeting, mm. he will bring out all the details <coughs> of what they have discussed and the things that he's going to do over there. Such things, you keep it to your chest and you work underground to make sure that the conflict or the fight or whatever is happening there will reduce. And uh, also make sure that the, at least the curfew is imposed where you have daylight because you don't need um, 24 hours where you, someone will say that they'll give you light morning, afternoon, evening to go down and look at those who are committing the crime. In the evening, there's a lot of crime going on, yeah. especially in the dark, mm. when you don't see things. So you need to at least put in some curfew where there is dark and make sure that your security apparatus are moving or um, going around to make sure that people don't go out and cause havoc. So at this point in time, we need to just bring the peace that we need over there. That's the first point of call. The first thing to do is to call in this curfew and then your other strategies you are putting in place, you don't, you don't bring it out. Gradually, you weed off all those. You can get all those uh, kingpins who are causing the problems. Bring them down. Talk to them. Do other things that would at least bring that peace. But when you look around Boko, it comes back to the fact that you have almost about, I think, six, if, six or seven, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, NDC constituency surrounded it. And it tells you that you mean you know, pussy guard as a bit yes, all so. those people all those uh, ndc enclaves that they surrounded boko and they feel that they shouldn't lose boko so rain or shine election year let's push something oh you where, think that's oh, the yes. i mean you really see between the oh, lines are you, you saying that because they are ndc <coughs> enclave they should rather have uh, a, a grip on the constituency what in their if, various if I'm surrounded by all these, uh, less than, mm. if MPP if are that's surrounded, my enclave, you are saying. if MPP are surrounded that place, the best they will do is to make sure that they have peace in Boko. But when you have all these enclaves surrounded around you, and you make sure that this place, I don't want to lose, rain or shine, every, study and see, every four years, that is where you get all these spells coming out. Every four years. Why? What are we doing to ourselves? And last four years, I remember I came to sit here and we pleaded with them that it's a, it is about your lives, your children, your future. That place is like every time you don't want development to go on there. People will fool what they, whatever they want to do, sit somewhere and fool everything. And then we'll always have to pump money there to make sure that we bring peace. Because whatever confusion is going on there can move out into the other constituencies and the other and, and this thing towns and less than over there and it's, it's not going to help us as a nation we need to develop that place we need to develop everywhere they need to get their share of the national cake but it keeps on coming on every four years and it's not helping us please let us let us let us put all this aside and let us look at the nation as a whole we shouldn't be seen as nation records we should be seen as nation builders where we come together and work for the good of this country and that is where I get hurt that every time, every time, we'll come and sit down, we'll talk about it, and then we sit down and say that this thing, and oh, what is going on? Oh, the, uh, this thing, the government should do this, the government should do that. When we surrounded ourselves with Boko Central, Zebila, Garu, Tem um, Tempani, and Pusiga, and uh, it's only Penduri that MPP holds. So you ask yourself, why? Can't even. Even if you are the opposition, can't you sit there and come together and say that, listen, for the peace of our people over there, let us protect them. Let us make sure that there is peace there. 
maybe we need to call on Asantini again to come and help in this situation because I believe that the last time when we came into power, the last time we called him, he was able to bring a lasting solution to some mm. of the conflicts that happened within the Northern Enclave. And maybe he, he will be the best to help this okay. time this time round. So I just have to plead with my brothers and sisters over there. It's about you. Don't let anyone come sit back and influence you. And by the time you realize you'll be killing yourselves, you'll be hurting yourselves, and you won't get the development that you need to get in that area. That's the only thing I can say for now. Mm. Umar. Yes, sir. Solutions needed. I mean, for example, if we have Mm -hmm. Is it Mahama Yariga and the rest? Uh, we have, um, of course, there was um, an interview that was granted to pressmen by the, <coughs> is it the Zabila MP? Yeah. That's uh, Kletos Afwaka uh, <coughs> saying that the yeah. government, but I know that from my sources in the security sector, they also say that they've been having missions there and sometimes their rifles <coughs> or sometimes their machinery mm -hmm. that you, um, um, sometimes you hear MG3s. There have been videos that I have and you'll be hearing she multiple rounds, say, you know. So, I mean, we need to speak the language of making sure that every side of this conflict um, gets to have a listening ear, but also get to hear what we're saying. Sure. How, how do we make sure there's a truth? Roland, before I um, go into the topic, let me first of all say uh, a good morning to His Excellency, the former President, John Romani Mahama. Um, over the weekend, on Sunday, we met at the National Mosque where the various groupings of the Muslim faith... You were there? I was there. Uh, the various Muslim group of the Muslim faith met the Ahmadiyya, Ahl Sunnah, Shia, Tijani. All of us basically met at the National Mosque. You would recollect that... Um, you would recollect... You don't see them as hypocrites again. You would recollect <laughs> that um, the National Muslims Conference head by the national chief imam basically submitted a 14 point manifesto to all the political parties and uh, john romani mahama his excellency adopted 12 out of the 14 and added some extra six and they thought that it was actually beautiful to to invite him over to come and grace the final program which was done on sunday he donated a pickup to the zakat fund and then some motorbikes to the muslim zongo communities um, media houses we just want to say thank you to him and then this morning i'd like to say thank you to my dad sheikh umar ibrahim the national imam of the sunni muslims i just want to say thank you to him mashallah roland <coughs> so i listened to alfred thompson his and, argument is and then he says that it's an ndc um the constituency yes, yes, yes. so it's an ndc place and then we are stoking fire i mean wisdom will not pick that i mean if this is our house and it is our space. Why burn it? I don't understand. He says that, you know, the entire area, you know, nobody wants anybody to enter and blah, blah, blah. And I'm saying that. We admit that the Kusau land, as we speak today, five out of those seats is for the NDC. One is what is, you know, in the hands of the NPP. Mm -hmm. The question I'm asking is that, why would the NDC that has majority of seats in that area decide for whatever reasons, to stoke fire so much such that we could even be. Oh, can you? When you're speaking, I'm. No, 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 no. I mean, it's a simple question. Please. Why would we? Why would we want to stoke fire, to create chaos, so much such that we'll give you an advantage to want to say that you want to do a state of emergency and then we won't even have votes, you know, being casted? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, wisdom doesn't pick it. You see, what these uh, half-brothers keep doing, and we keep talking about these things, and people are not really paying attention, is that they are very, <coughs> very, they are very, very cunning. Let me give you an example. Mahama Yariga, his father is Kosao. His mother is from Mampusi. What does the NDC benefit in creating chaos between these families when they know amongst the NPP, there are leading members of the MPP whose family members come from both. What wisdom is there in that? Mm. Then he says that these people, they have a problem. And every time when it's election year, and, and, and what of that, and, and on, on, on. Listen, listen. When you're given leadership, you've been given something. You've not been given it. It's not a barbecue. When they give you leadership, you've been given a position to stand and fight for the people. That's yeah, what a position of responsibility. Responsibility. But somebody to say so to uh, those positions held uh, by NDC MPs. I'm not disputing that. 
I'm not disputing totally. I'm saying to you that the NDC would have nothing to gain to create chaos. Because we hold five of those seats. But you see, the MPP has a strategy for these elections. They say we would win these elections by any means necessary. So we can have a conversation about what happened, for example, in voter region. Let's displace the people. We can have a conversation about the things that are happening with the Electoral Commission. Let's create chaos. We can have a conversation of what is happening in Boko as we speak right now. Let's create confusion. In every way, they can find a way to reduce the number of votes that the NDC would have. They are basically on that tangent. If not, the spillage in, Bok in, in Volta region doesn't actually make any sense. What is going on in Boko doesn't make sense. Did you know that the Dagbon, the, the, the case of Dagbon was actually far more volatile than what we're currently having in Boko? Roland, how can you have settlement between two rivals when you can't bring them onto a table to have a conversation? How, how can you do that? There needs to be conflict resolution. I mean, it's, it, it's just common sense. So you're sense. saying that we're not looking at the root cause of the problem? Roland, if their interest, if the MPP's interest and the president's interest and His Excellency Baumia's interest is to resolve this issue, trust me, the issue will be resolved. Why Baumia? What has he done to you? He's the vice president. He goes around that area, he campaigns. Everybody goes around that area, they campaign. He has a responsibility as a vice president. He, he, he's he's a, 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 a son of the Bampusi. He belongs to one faction. How does he feel having his members murdered and having families from his family who probably have members from the Kusas who are also family members of his being murdered? How does he feel? as a vice president. How difficult is it for the vice president to get up or the president to get up and say, you know what? The Kusas, come here. The Mampusis, come here. Nairi, where are you? Overlord, come, please. You know, the Kusas, come. Let's sit down, let's have a conversation. What do you want? How would you resolve this issue? What is the way forward? Allow them to vent until you come to a solution. How do you have two separate leaders fighting and then you expect that those that are beneath them would actually follow? How is that possible? And Bagman gave you a typical example recently. Which is what? In Parliament, when you said, you know, we're synodai. Because obviously, what is happening is that if both parties cannot agree, then certainly what you intend to do is that you want to have a conversation. You want to be able to come back, sit back, and look at how you're going to relate to the issues. I am telling you on authority that if the government intends to resolve this issue, they will. They will. The only reason why they're not doing that is because they want to create more chaos and see how the place can actually be left as volatile as it is so that in December, we would have a lot more issues to deal with. But my, my, my call today is like the call that the former president indicated yesterday. He indicated, look, we are one family. The man proceeds, the Kusas, we're one family. We marry into each other. When you kill one person from the other side, you're actually murdering your own. That's what it is. And I give an example of Mahama Yariga. His father is Kusas, his mother is Mampusi. What does, what, what do we benefit in creating this chaos? What do we get? Uh, uh, we have Nani Asapon here. Uh, we'll get to him soon. But we, we need to um, let Adam Bonang um, take leave of her because we want to also uh, look at the energy uh, issues as well. Dr. Adam Bona, um, I'm getting a lot of messages about, so this one is coming from Eric Tonka, a uh, great friend of mine. He says he's a Mampusi from Northeast region. Uh, okay, Mampusi are from Northeast. Okay, so sorry. Eric Tonka uh, is in the Boku area and says that there is an illegal chief in Boku. He should be arrested. Why not arrest him? All right, okay, let's see. We all know there's a recognized, there was a recognized chief in Boku who ruled for 40 years, so why now? And if you take a look at many of the narratives coming in and those who seem to know the area, they seem to have a certain inclination that somebody is fueling this conflict. You hear the sounds of the MG3, MG3s, etc. Um, can we blame both sides or perhaps we should have more responsibility on the apparatus of state who are in charge of security? Well, Roland, what I would say is that 
we the, the, the state must take responsibility while the people also take some portion of their responsibility. And I think I indicated uh, on your network, uh, when we joined, what do you call it? Uh, when I joined the state security, uh, you know, apparatus to go to Boko uh, some time ago, we met the, uh, by then there wasn't any rival chief. We met the Boko Naba and uh, we went to uh, the other side for, to meet the man process, by then it was a record. We met them, met the youth group on the man process side and also on the Kosao side, met both of them. And in fact, uh, they gave us three months that we won't hear any gunshots. And the promise from the states, and, and uh, Honorable Nitu was part of the delegation, Honorable uh, Ambrose Derry. He was the then interior minister. He was part of the de delegation. The former CDS, the IGP, they were, I mean, all of them were part of the delegation. And there was a promise from the state security architecture that uh, they should, you know, put down their guns for three months uh, whilst dialogue probably takes place. But unfortunately, when we came back, there was no contact. There was nothing. For three months, there was no gunshot in Boko. And the people will tell you. So I would not say the people just like to fight. Because then when well, I joined the delegation and we visited Boko, and there was a promise that there will be another round of visit. They, and this was said to the Boko Naba then, was said to the youths of uh, the Kusau area, the regents on the Manprusi area, and then uh, what do you call the youth on the Manprusi area. But for three months, there was no visit. And when I checked, I was told there is no resource to go for, you know, uh, to, for the state to go back and continue the dialogue. So immediately after the three months, the, you know, shootings started again. Mm. And if you know, even the military, what do you call it in Baku, the 11th mechanized uh, unit, mm. sometimes they come under attack. Yeah. And as we speak, the police station uh, within Baku, the fence wall, portions of it have been broken down because itself has come under attack. And so mine is that, and I've said it repeatedly, for those of them in Boku, it is in their own interest to put down their guns and stop killing one another because then uh, it will be very difficult. I think I heard uh, the, my colleague, uh, you know, the person who spoke on the NDC, the MPP side, speak about that Santehene. Yes, His, His Majesty that Santehene has been a uh, part of the dialogue to try and broker up peace in Boko. But, you know, the, the, the situation in Boko is so different from Tabo. In Boko, uh, you have, you call them, uh, you know, steps that you have. These are two tribes, distinct tribes who are, you know, feuding. But in the Dagbon crisis, there was two brothers who were disputing. And it is easy to bring two brothers to a round table to talk than to bring two tribes who might be from probably either their step-siblings or uh, however you want to put it, to a round table. Mm. And, and when you look at what happened in Baku, so I have heard it. Asante Hene, he's, he's playing his role. But the truth is that it is incumbent on the people to put down their weapons and probably let peace reign. But the executive, we voted the executive into power to ensure that these things are done. Listen, the warlords in Baku, I have said this repeatedly, there are warlords who are fueling the conflict in Baku. The state security knows them. I am saying on authority that the state security know them. Mm. But for some reasons, it's become very difficult to apprehend them. And some of them are very important persons in our society. Mm. Without a doubt, very, very important persons in our society. The evidence is there. The evidence is abound. That, but you see, for me, I can only talk about these things because I have no power. I can't go and arrest anybody. The okay. state and I have had conversations with the state security architecture. I've been part of meetings. They seem they know some of these persons. And mm. until some of these persons get arrested, it will be very difficult to deal with the issue in Baku. But this round of fighting has to do with the enskinment of, you know, another chief. And that is probably has further widened 
the you know the gap between the man process or the kusasis and the and the man process because as we speak you have uh, the illegitimate chief according to the presidency or according to the uh, executive where they are uh, you know released there is an illegitimate chief that has been enskinned and is in Baku. What mm -hmm. are you doing about it? Yeah. Um, Don't come and tell me so, that so, the so, person is illegitimate. So, so, tell so, me what you are doing about it to stop mm. the, the carnage that is taking place. Do Yesterday, you, I was in a program, Democracy, I'm telling you, Democracy, this Ghana, uh, Care Ghana program. And a young man, someone I've known for a long time, walked to me and told me four of his brothers on their way to Boko have been killed. So we are hearing eight people are dead. But it looks like the number seems to maybe higher. I'm not too, um, the, the number could be higher. Where are we going from, from where we are? The, the executive should show, you know, let, let I me mean, show the way for us to follow. Roland, I'm listening to you. All right. So the installation of that rival chief, and we know that it was from Nalerugu, there's been a chain of um, act actions. There was a statement that was even issued that he, he sh he's an imposter, so he should be arrested. And this was coming from the state. And then subsequently yeah. now, we're told that he has made entry or he was made entry into the... He, he was allowed to make entry into the area, etc. Exactly. So my point is that, you see, no one should die because of chieftaincy disputes. Because as we speak, both, both uh, chiefs, one, we are told, is in, 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 illegitimate according to the state. The other, we know his gazetted, is the Bokunaba, we are told he's there. The two of them are there, and it is innocent people who are dying. And the state is complaining, just like I am complaining, and you are complaining, and we are talking. What is the state doing to show leadership? What is the state doing to show, and I have said elsewhere, that you see, why can't we bring them to a round table and ask them? What do you want? The Kusau uh, people will tell you that, well, the place belongs to us. Uh, we, are a, we have a chief who is gasseted, and, and that is how it is. The state has repeated that. The man process would also tell you, we have probably a, a justifiable reason for APCD. So where do we go at the moment? We need a middle ground. Okay. And I heard the, 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 the colleague or from the MPP talk about politics. Yes. Politics is another issue that probably is not letting this whole thing die off. But as to, I won't, I won't say it is the NDC that is causing it because just like the NDC rep said on the platform, why would you want to burn a place you call home? Logically, I don't think that would be very sad. You won't want to call it, you won't want to burn a place that is called home. But I think that let's put the politics aside and see how innocent people, you know, can live together peacefully. At the end of the day, as we speak, I'm not too sure what is happening in Boko at the moment. Every day, every night, is something else. The, 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 I mean, uh, the, the colleague from the MPP side says that government need not tell us everything they are doing. I can say that whatever they are doing, I mean, I work within the security space because when they have these meetings, before even the meetings, we get to know. And the idea, we don't have to put out everything. But I will tell you mm. for sure, that the meeting that was held did not culminate into anything. It was not going to lead into anything. If there was something, we all try to manage okay. what is supposed to be put out there. But as right. we speak, Roland, there is really nothing that I can say gives me comfort that this round of carnage that we are seeing in Boko is going to stop today or uh, to stop tomorrow because as we speak, there are two chiefs who are in Boko. How do we deal with this situation as we speak? The hmm. talking must stop whilst we take bold steps to ensure that the carnage stops because then, if not, we might see something that will look like a genocide in Boko. We need to be very careful. Mm. Well, thank you very much, uh, Adam Boda and uh, Dr. Adam Boda joining us there. Do Dr. Hassan Yariga uh, comes from the area. and Nani Asapong, He says, government is playing with the situation in Boko. People are dying. The situation is escalating and spreading to other towns and constituencies. Let's be very careful about the situation. Government's position must be communicated to all. We need peace in Boko and Ghana. And as a native of Boko and a presidential candidate, my paramount concern and interest is the peace and security 
in the area and subsequently when you also look at the number of messages coming through so for example from Gaiji who says that the fact is the elders and opinion leaders in the area have not shown any commitment to the cause of achieving a lasting peace in Boko. What the youth in Boko must know and understand is that those who encourage and finance them to fight have nothing to lose. In fact, they have given their children the best in education and do not uh, therefore care what happens to the area. And then Amit Kwame also sent me the same. He says, um, okay, he says, the present escalation of the of the conflict is instigated by the Baumi Ekufado government. And he continues by saying, the government has allowed an illegal chief and skinned by the Nayeri, the overlord of Mamprosis, to be brought into Boku overnight. This is the cause of the present escalation in the conflict. So this one rests in the ambit of national security directly, 100%, and the government is culpable. Roland, it's heartbreaking. Mm. It's heartbreaking. And um, it's so unfortunate <laughs> that when I was coming, I was listening to you and you were saying you have very good friends in Boko. I, I personally also have my classmates and former working colleagues who are from Boko and still live in Boko. And it's so unfortunate what is happening. Do you know Sally for combat? You, you might not know. Yes. Him. Okay. And this dawn, there was a funny but not funny thing that happened. So my regional um, anchor, who is in the Upper East region, decided to call me around five, five thereabout, and he joined me to a conference conference call, mm. and he's. He said that he didn't want to hear it alone. And what I was hearing was like, when you have gone for prayers and people are clapping. And then I was like, what, are you, what, 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 what sound is that? And your guess is as good as mine. This was a beautiful sound. It's very scary. I mean, I cry. It was through the phone. Yeah. I, I, could, I could still... I, I keep hearing them all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I was scared in my room. And he was like, Nana, this is what we hear. This is like a bell to wake up. And so it's not, it's, it's no joke. And I, I come in here, I was like, if this is what is going on and we find political communicators, come to sit on sets and try to play politics with the situation. That is because they have not been there. We sent a music van to Boko Quarries and to Upper East Quarries. You mean the movement for change, the the movement for change in the Alliance? The for change in the Alliance. You know, we sent the uh, music van to them. And when it was delivered, it took the driver who took it coming back to Accra two days because he didn't know what was happening there. He you no know, going there during the day it was more like a normal drive through. So he decided to return and he had to find copper. And I think that sometimes we need to tell the story as it is to draw that picture. Not to scare people or to create fear and panic, but to give people and authority the understanding of what is actually happening. Roland, it is reported that eight lives were lost yesterday. But the little the calls I made there when, could be more. when I got the topic for this discussion from the place. It's, it's, as the expert said, it's, it's not just eight. This is what has been reported. But the gentleman also gave me another figure. And I think that national security should be up and down. There is a historic um, background to, to this whole conflict that dates back into the Asian days. 
the the war, pre pre independence the period. period the Bia war with the Kusasis and how it all happened there it's a complex story all right and i would want to agree with the security aspect unlike the case that happened in Dagon, that has to do with two brothers these are two different tribes that actually came together for a reason and there is a need for us to move forward and so in dealing with this matter you need to apply something different from what happened i would not want to play politics with this because i mean listening to afred i was watching on facebook as well you were watching yes eh? and coming and when afred was talking about you know, being surrounded by six constituencies and five or so of them being NDC and for that. But matter. he was not wrong. He was not wrong in, in itemizing the demography. But I think in my view, he was wrong to have related <laughs> the instability in the area to the fact that the area is pro NDC. I think he was talking about how leadership needs it needs to be brought to bear. Thank you. No. He was <laughs> trying to say, my understanding, that the place would not know peace because it has been surrounded. Because he made a, a follow up that if it were the NPP, you understand? We are trying to settle mm -hmm. the matter. Mm -hmm. We are trying to massage egos so that they come to a compromise, at least. There was some stability in the area for some time before the court ruling and the lifting up of the uh, warrant and all of that. Yeah, about three, was, three months. There was some three months and entering into the fourth month, yes. All right. And looking at what, is, what has happened over these two, three days or few days, I think that probably the court, if they had looked beyond just the issues that were brought to them, all right, they would have waited on their ruling and allowed certain, you know, discussions on the table. And I would want to join the many voices that are calling on the vice president to intervene. He is the chairman of the police council, and I think that he is very influential when it comes to that area. I mean, he's from one side; he's very, very influential. The egos are high, and so we need the high profile individuals who are from both areas, both the Kusa. If we are able to identify very influential people from that place, as we are identifying very influential people mm. from the Mount process, let them come together. Mm. Let us all sit around the table, <laughs> let us discuss, let us meet at the point and see. Because, Roland, this is a conflict. Aludio to um, that that is coming out of Aludia rights and chieftaincy, and people will not just let go like that. Mm. This the recent one I'm reading and talking to people. It's been over forty years. Just a quite recent one. Forget about what, what happened in the in the in the in the colonial era. President Kufo was able to manage the situation. Atamels was able to manage the situation. During John Muhammad's time, there was some, you know, but he was able to manage the situation. We've been able to manage the situation up until now. And so, indeed, if what the security expert is saying is true, which some of us do believe, that there are some hands in it, we can identify those hands and publicly call on them to bring stability to the area. Let them make public statements. Let them be seen seated around the table. Mm. Let it come on national television. Let the youth in those areas see these persons who are influencing their actions mm. that is actually affecting development in the area. See them discuss and agreeing to a peace call. Mm. And then we can, can work. So I a, think that a, a proper peace um, or a roadmap, a is, roadmap needed. is needed. A All roadmap right. is needed. Unfortunately, Mr. Alfred Thompson. Yeah. Fortunately, to me, I, I, in my view, I think because the the chairman of the police council actually is an influential person from the You area. mean the vice president? He's the chairman of the, according to the constitution. According to, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that since he's from the area, I think that a call from him would not be bad. Now, in my view, 
a call from him would not be bad because in rating or ranking the persons of influence within the area i think he ranks top okay so let me put this into perspective we have members of parliament yes we have the vice president at the top chairman yes. of the police council of course yes but um then we have members of parliament going to benefit uh, for the election will be the vice president he's a presidential candidate he's chairman of the police council but we also have members of parliament yes. we have um the unfortunately uh, the majority of them are from the, other, well. from the other side yeah so i'm only saying that and we have hassan well, Ayaruga. No, yeah of course even yeah hassan Ayaruga, he just gave me a message yes. and i read it as well so for me i i'm thinking that there's a certain ones to this Okay, and long-standing historical conflicts also need to be tackled the way they are. Yeah. And um, blaming or picking on whatever one says is not, is not the way to go, I think. Uh, I'm, thinking, I'm just moderating. Well, of, of course. But, but yesterday there was a press conference by um, the current chieftain, the, the Kusao side, and, and they say he's the legitimate one. Okay, so this one is coming from a senior military officer yeah. um, who is very much familiar with the, with the area, area. Yeah. Have, had even been deployed to the area uh, and all that. And he says, um, this is Messi Onwona, he says, if the security services and the army appoint commanders to lead and manage the Boko crisis and other security issues based on political affiliation and party membership instead of competence, competence. and institutional and discipline, discipline or regimentation, security issues are left unresolved he says roland i've been to the area not too far away is the misiga border mm -hmm. and already you could hear that concerns have been raised about terrorists in the burkina faso area who come into our planes to come and get medical treatment etc it is a volatile situation as an army officer on one hand, you take people there and you find your personnel and your troops sometimes being attacked by people. And so the military will be blamed. But at the same time, there are perpetrators within there who have machinery that I keep wondering who give them those type of weapons. Where do they pass? Do they go through police inspections? Do they go through the same areas that we go through and get to Boko? And these are the questions that need to be answered. How do we resolve this? Um, Roland, I'm very, very glad you listened to me and you realized where I was coming from when I mentioned the six surrounding constituencies made up of six NDC MPs plus the Boko MP who has both sides, as my brother said, <laughs> from the whole conflict, both sides. He belongs to both sides. How easier can it be that someone who comes from both sides, as against someone who comes from one side of the divide, would bring people together? If I'm a leader in this situation, I should be able to move to my left-hand side, speak to the leaders there, move to the right-hand side, speak to the leaders there. Because the most important thing concerns the person coming from that area and how he relates with both sides. That is the first and the most important thing. The MP who belongs to both sides should be able to talk to the two leaders and bring them together. And together with the six surrounded MPs, they should come together and work towards that lasting solution. That makes them the leader that you expect them to be. It's not just going to sit in parliament, but how you also manage your enclave and make sure that there is peace and prosperity and progress within that constituency. How about the national leadership? You see, both of them mentioned Dr. Baumia. And, you know, with security matters, you have to be <coughs> extra, extra, extra cautious. If you are not careful, <coughs> you will be pleading with one side. The other side will come to you and say that, hey, you come from our side. Why are you now negotiating with the other side? You can plead with your side, and the other side will say that, oh, because you come from here, you are negotiating. So when you are dealing with such a situation, it's very, very, very volatile. And you have to be extra cautious in dealing with it. That is why usually with such situations, you send someone to do that on your behalf instead of you going. So they don't see you as being a one-sided person. That is how you work within this enclave. So it is easier for someone who comes from both sides to work on them and then bring them together to a round table where you solve the problem. 
and that is what will make the person a good leader as we expect so when you come here and you try and shift and say that oh and he's the chairman of the uh, <coughs> police council so he should go and do it i sit down and ask you you realize that when uh, adam, bodan. adam bodan was speaking he said that oh <laughs> they have been there and for the three months at least there was some peace it was after that that all this came he said that oh they know the people who are behind this so government should call but he did never mention the names of those even though he knows and there is a reason why he didn't mention names it takes time it takes wisdom and it takes a lot of dedication to do go into or uh, uh, put yourself into such a situation to make sure that there's a lasting peace within that enclave <coughs> the my, uh, guns that you are talking about there are no guns that ordinarily you and me we can go and buy and just give it out to there are things that are quite expensive and it's not belonging to maybe you say you just say one person amongst the whole lot but the rest are carrying machetes so it's an individual thing it tells you what is behind all this so when you are dealing with such a situation you have to be extra cautious we want peace because you can't rule over a place where there is always conflict neither can you bring enough development to that enclave when there's so much um, chaos we will plead with them and we will tell them and we'll also i'll also plead <coughs> with my ndc mps within that enclave that they should come together and work with um, honorable ayariga who is a very good friend of mine that they should bring lasting peace. Which of them, Hassan peace. or both? I am um, Honorable Ayariga, the MP. Mm. Did I say Hassan? No, I'm asking. But they are all quite. Uh, I said Honorable Ayariga. Muhammad Ayariga. Okay. The I, th MP. I thought politician, everybody else no, is no, no, no. these days. They should, you see, they should the work MP. together. You're talking yeah, the, the MP. MP. It's not the presidential candidate. Mm. No, no, no. Mm. The MP. Mm. Let's the other six come together with him and work together to help, help him mm. solve that problem within his enclave. It will help all of us. Yeah. And it will bring more development into that area. Right. When there is chaos, there is no development. But when there is peace, you can get a lot of development within your enclave. Yeah. That money being used to settle these goals can be used to build that place into a huge okay. and lovely tourist place that mm. we can all go all right. and enjoy one day. Thank I, you. I have this message from uh, a friend of mine who works in the security sector as well. Because as Kamel was consulting a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So this one is called Cantona. And he said he's a Dagao. Mm -hmm. He says, it is that simple. As nothingness, we all know who owns land where and who is eligible to be a chief where. Mm -hmm. A Dagumba, Kasana, mm -hmm. Wala, Dagao, mm -hmm. Sesala, Mamprose, mm -hmm. Kusasi, Gonja, Bimoba, Basari, Kotokoli, Nanumba, Frafra, Mosi, etc. Know where they come from and the land that is theirs. A Dagumba cannot be enskinned as a Wala chief in Wa. That is sacrilege. We as Northerners know where Mamprosi land is and where Kusasi land is and who is entitled to be enskinned as chief. People know the truth and are going around it. This is very annoying, to say the least. Let me be factual. Mampuses do not own land in the Upper East region. Of course, people have settled over time, and it makes a lot of sense to say this is where people should belong. But where the truth is, we should let the truth prevail. That is a hard, it's at the heart of the conversation. Yes. Do you think that we know the, what the real issues are and we're dancing around it? Where, where we could have um, uh, activated the agents of state mm. and then to be able to quickly go in and say, we need a truce. Roland, listening to Alfred, I'm even more sad now. Because you see, his earlier presentation, I was able to basically forgive him. But this second one is a problem. Are you not adding to the thing? Ayariga, I'm coming. Ayariga and the vice president, who wields power? Who wields, you know, strength? Which one amongst the two of them wields strength and power? What is your use in government? What is your use? Like, what, what is the MPP's use today? What is your use? Umar, when uh, I'm coming, I'm coming we shouldn't do blame game. No, 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 no. This is not a blame game. I'm saying, I'm speaking to a certain issue. When they're stealing, do they call us to come and help them? Do you invite us to, to come and help you? When you were stealing National Cathedral, man, do you invite us to come and help you? What is that? When you are given leadership as a leader, you have been given responsibility. 
Everybody is looking at you. Your Mahama is looking at you. To make sure that the dollar comes to a certain figure. The vice president is the head of the security council. He belongs to one of the families. The vice president cannot put a stop to this. <laughs> the and, and vice he, president no. is the chairman of the police council. I'm coming, I'm coming, no problem. He's, he's from Mampusi. You're telling me that the vice president, wanting to be the president of the Republic of Ghana, cannot manage at this time, as a, vice, as a presidential candidate for the MPP, cannot manage at this time a conflict in his enclave, where he's coming from. He can manage Ghana. <laughs> but he can manage Ghana. Oh, how did you come to that conflict? Roland, when you're given responsibility, when you're given responsibility, <laughs> when you're given power, what you have been given is discretion. You have to exercise wisdom in the performance of your discretion. I am saying categorically, we can forgive the president. Nana Kufuado. He's not from the north. We can forgive him. I am saying that the vice president is the head of the security council. Please, who sent the He's case the to chair court? He's the chair of the police council. Who sent the case to court in the first place? Rexek. Right? Isn't that government? Mm. They even issued a statement issued after statement. saying that I'm don't saying recognize that. this and that and that. Exactly. So who did that? Government. No? What's your point? No? Okay, so government does that. The same government, when the time was due for them to go for appeal in Kumasi, the Attorney General didn't show up. Why? What are you implying? I am saying that the same government that took the case to court was not there to insist and make sure, like Adam Bona is speaking, that the right things were done. So what happened? The bench warrant, the warrant was taken off. And then we've had four young men who were on their way to go and bury their father. Two of them who are siblings. Wakas. Wakas was going to bury his father with his younger brother. Wakas is that young person that is helping all the NGOs and, and doing all the support. Together with two of his friends, one of them called Nuru, murdered. As we speak, their bodies are coming back to Accra. And we console their families. When it is time and they, we need you, look, look, look at, see, they make the mistakes and end up killing them and, and end up putting all of us in problems. As we speak, the people that are being murdered, there is no way under high heavens the vice president can tell us that it won't affect him, whether he likes it or not, it will. Why? Because whether he likes it or not, within his family, there are some who are married with the Kusas. Like it or not. Look at what is happening in the Ashanti region. But two for shouting and shouting and shouting on the issue of Ghana. I'm saying no one is doing anything. When there's a problem, then they come and sit at the back. Oh, come, NDC, come and help us. When they're stealing this, oh, <laughs> you guys are not involved. I am telling you on authority, Alfred Thompson, take it from me. The vice president has proven without doubt. If you can sit here and tell me that the vice president will not be able to go in there, and the reason why he can't go in there is because if he goes here, people will say that, oh, he belongs here. And when he goes here, people will say, he has no use because... In leadership, you should have what is called conflict resolution skills. A wise person would sit down and say, listen, these are my people. Yes, they belong to me. But you are also my family members. Why? Because at the end of the day, some of my family members or some of the people from my people actually marry you. So at the end of the day, come, let's sit down, control, have order, have control. You don't have control. You don't have power. You want Mahama Yariga. Baumia wants Mahama Yaga to come and help him to solve an issue. You didn't in there. say Baumia. <laughs> Why are you trying to misquote him? No, I'm coming. On. No, but I'm coming. I am saying Let's on be authority. Categorical. No, I'm, I'm saying I'm saying that I'm saying that. At what, the end what, of the day, what, 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 what will be the use <laughs> when you put Mahama Yaga down and you put the vice president of the republic down? I'm saying that between these two people, who is a big fish? Who has been given responsibility, Roland? Who has been given responsibility? Who is looking up to who? An MP of that area can solve this problem, and then we have a long way to go. If the president, if an MP, if the president and the vice president, who is the chairman of the police council, including six people cannot, who are no, no, him. no, no problem, no problem, no problem. I am saying that if the vice president, who has been given power and is wielding power, at this point in time is telling us that his hands are tied behind his back and would need Bahama Yarika to intervene in order for him to solve a problem that he has been dedicated to do. And, and that is a problem. He is not supposed to just go and pass laws. He's supposed to help the same. I am not disputing that. I am saying that. And that's what you should know. No, no, no. No, 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 but I am saying that Mahama Yariga is not the vice president of the Republic of Ghana. He's, He's not the, the MP of that area. It doesn't matter. He I am saying that, that as area. much as... Oh. As much as he's the member of parliament for that area, I am saying that between your presidential candidate, who is the vice president today, and Mahama Yariga, which one of them that when he speaks carries weight? 
Which one carries weight? Oh, oh, man. Work on no, no, no. Which one carries weight? So if you're if, oh, so if you're here and you're admitting that the vice president, excuse me to say, is useless, in the situation that we find ourselves in, he cannot. No, that is what you're imputing. Oh, thank you very much. Can I? Can I have? Thank you very you much. see, you can't put words in my mouth and just walk he, away. He never it. said that. Let's. I uh, never said. I think we we can. It's a. It was supposed to talk the peace. Argue impugning. When I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm coming. Help bring development. Unity Alfred, when you are speaking, Oscar when you are speaking, the, right, the, when you are speaking, the, I'm sitting what, here. No, Alfred, I didn't when you use words that you can't, say you didn't use I said say you are thing. impugning. No, you can't assume that I'm so impugning. Can, 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 can I? 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 Can based on some of the conversations that I've heard this morning, mm. that the vice president is basically useless in, in this conflict and can basically not affect any change. So much such that we will require a member of parliament who is under this vice president to come and actually proffer solutions. So my argument is basic. I am saying So that what do we need to do before the time? Because the election is have, just... Listen, we have indicated... And I have friends in there and they can... His Excellency John Roman Muhammad has indicated. We have called on the Kosal people. We are calling on the Mamuzi people. <laughs> We're telling them that, listen, whether we like it or not, there's a sinister agenda ongoing. We are not the ones to say this or that. The presidency, the executive, the vice president, they all know what they're supposed to do. The government is the one that sent the case to court. When it went to appeal, the government was supposed to have been there. The attorney general didn't have a representative. I am saying that if government wants to solve the issue, they will solve it. When they are stealing, they don't call us. When there's a problem, they should deal with it. A, a, a medical doctor um, that I know in the area has sent me a message. And he says that the Boku issue is purely political. I'm not mentioning the name because... No, no, I don't, yeah. you, 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 the, the Boku issue is purely political, Roland. Nana went to the Nigeria a week ago, and they demanded for the fugitive Seidu Abagari, Abagari for vote, and the following week he was relocated. Okay. I don't okay. want to go okay. to that. You know about the story also. Yeah, Mr. Walker, pin them... Down to the current text, the soldier man said about land ownership and chieftaincy. They are all related. How do weapons get into Boko? Why do we allow people who will be in buses and they can't even go through Wale Wale and then get to Zabila before they get to Boko and then even subsequently get to Pusiga, Pusiga Garu, Garu and the Garu, rest? Yeah. These are matters of fact. The reality is... A government manages every institution of state. The Ghana Armed Forces, the various security agencies. If we say small Boku area, we cannot move in, stabilize it, and ensure that people move to and fro, then as a country, what use are we in protecting our citizens? Well, Is there a semblance of that situation that we have? That a government is in charge of all security apparatus, if really they are committed oh. to... Uh, Roland, when I see you are speaking English, then you see I'm telling you are speaking English. Mm. A cabra for the dog. Cabra for the dog. Mm. Do I need to tell you that the executive or the government is in charge of security of this, of this nation? <laughs> Roland, there is somebody who is the commander-in-chief all right, and that responsibility, that authority, that power cannot be given to anybody. It is, it is by constitution given to someone. Mm. It is by constitution given to the head of government. And so there is no basis for this question you would ask me because it is clear, it's very much explicit. Now, when you want to resolve this kind of when you want to resolve this kind of conflict roland there is the need for us to be able to separate the person the emotions <laughs> from the problem now you could be a person 
who would be coming from one side or both sides. But in times of conflict resolution, when you are involved, you are no longer that person, but rather... Just a statesman. You are a, a, a public officer. A public officer and a statesman. You might have emotions. Of course, everybody has emotions. But you should have that high level of emotional intelligence to be able to separate your emotions from the solutions mm. and the problem at hand. Roland, conflict resolution itself is a skill that every leader would have to be able to develop. And so if you do not have that skill in conflict resolution, it will be very difficult, even when a roadmap is given to you, for you to be able to implement the roadmap that has been given to you. All right. So in my view, I think that there is that lack of skill in leadership in terms of conflict resolution. This is a very complex case. This is a very complex situation that we need a high level skilled individual all right or group of individuals in government to be able to lead this well, the, i have a feeling there is a lack of 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 the sense of agency in this matter why why do you think so i don't know if you have followed the trend on how even communication about this whole conflict situation in Morocco comes out all right. I don't know if you follow the trend on how issues are dealt with when it comes to Boko and the same conflict. I feel there is that lack of sense of agency. And that lack of sense of agency is, is being played deliberately because some political or some politicians are benefiting from what is happening. And I would want to agree with the experts on what they say. Politicians are benefiting from this. And if they are not, they should let us see that in them advancing that skill in leadership in <coughs> resolving this. And they should let us have that feel of the sense of agency. Roland, just to conclude on this, I think that if we are able to look to the face of authority, to the face of power, and not be hypocritical, and speak truth to power, we will not be where we are today. As I said, it's right over land and chieftaincy. If you go to the northern, I've lived in the northern region almost all my life. As the texter said, there is a clear definition. The, everybody knows where the authority of their skin ends, starts and ends. They know where their land starts and ends, and they know who is in charge and who is in control where. Let us speak to power. That's it. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I wanted to do something on power or electricity, but we're not able to do it. But oh, Are we done? Yes. Uh, Adele, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Ronan. You seem very emotional today. So, uh, if, I, if, I, if I can just say, uh, no, you know, no, a word. if you say it, everybody. No, 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 no. Just, just to the family members. Thompson, thank you very much as well. Thank you. And then also, Nani Asapong, I've loved you coming. I'm, I'm, I'm inviting you to to the walk on Saturday. So just as we painted region. Ashanti region yellow last two weeks, Saturday, um, Alan Chamantin is leading a walk All right. on Saturday um, through the principal streets of Greater Accra. And we are All painting right. the entire of Greater Accra yellow, just like your New Day colors. Why do you people like using that? New Day was, the montage was done before. Yeah, where that go or Oh, be the same country. The same <laughs> country. <laughs> Step the into country. the world of Dewa <laughs> 539 okay. chop morning. And uh, with Dewa 539, uh, for your chance to win big, you need to make sure that you play this. And it's for Dewa Direct and Dewa chop morning. Now with Dewa Direct, you dial star 446 hash. Ping the region of the numbers, 1 to 39. Win 20 times your stake, 40 times and 400 times your stake. And then also get to win cash every evening at 7 p.m. And on Sundays at 6 p.m. Early birds, they love they watch up morning. And at 10 a.m., you also have to dial uh, same, star 446 hash. You choose the range of the numbers. You know, the good thing is you win 20 times 
20 times, 40 mm. times, 400 times just. You can play online, dewa-nle.com. Very easy. Easy peasy. As it is. Um, I have this one coming from Chairman Prosper who says that I haven't had light since yesterday. I've been experiencing power cut over the period. I was thinking you would discuss the power situation. Well, unfortunately, we weren't able to uh, discuss it. But also, uh, Nelson Akotia says, look, we have to make sure there's peace across the country. The election is up. Why are we making sure we're not resolving this? Let's move in with the army, resolve the conflict, and then create the peace that is needed. All right. For all those who have sent us messages, we're grateful as well. Now, let's take a break. We'll be right back with the latest in sports.